Hello and welcome to another basic guide and this one is the Mesmer or Chronomancer profession and let me tell you I really enjoy this this profession it's can be quite difficult from time to time uh, it has its complexities um, but you will enjoy the Chronomancer so what are we going to be talking about we're going to be talking about the pros and cons of the profession, the skills, the gear, and how to get it. We're also going to be talking about the specializations and sort of an overview of what the profession does and how you play it. And then towards the end of the video, we'll also talk about the, you know, some basic gameplay, just how to get the most from the Mesmer profession. So, but first, a warning. Warning! This video is not meant for seasoned players. If you want Breaking news today as thousands of Guild Wars 2 players take to the streets to protest that they weren't sufficiently warned about the difficulties of the Mesmer profession. Viewers of the Mega YouTube channel reported the warnings were too focused on the skill level of the video and not the profession itself. Back to you in the studio, Mike. Uh, right. Yeah, so this is a hard profession. And even though this is a basic guide, do not attempt to play the Chronomancer unless you're prepared for some level of complexity. And uh, I guess that's about it for the warning. So what are the pros and cons of the profession? Well, the pros are pretty important because they make the Mesmer basically essential to any party. So first of all, it is the best profession for generating quickness in any sort of sizable quantities for your party. And if you're not sure what quickness is, quickness is something, if you see here, quickness, skills and actions are faster. It actually increases the cast time, or decreases rather, the cast time by 50%. So, for example, this match of recovery takes uh, two and three quarter seconds to, uh, to cast. So this will cast 50% faster when you when you have quickness on you and this means a lot for auto attacking professions it also means a lot for high high channel skills like meteor shower on the elementalist or you know, other things that just take a long time to cast essentially um so quickness generation number one number two is alacrity generation so this is the other half of why the mesmer is so great alacrity is cooldown reduction. So if I just hover over here, um, alacrity, 33% skill recharge rate. So this is the other sort of half. As I said, the quickness makes you cast the skills faster and alacrity makes the recharges much lower. So the combination of the two of these basically means you can do a lot more in a much smaller amount of time, which is very useful. Um, so those are the pros of the uh, profession. Um, not many other pros, but honestly, those two are pretty vital for any party. Uh, the cons. Um, there are one or two builds out there that are reasonable damage. However, Mesmer isn't really designed to be a damage profession. It's designed to be a utility profession. So um, I would say mediocre damage is how I would describe this. Um, then, secondly, and the cons, it's complex to play. And there are some simple principles that you can keep in your head that make it a little bit easier. But overall, Mesmer is a tricky profession to play. You'll be pressing buttons fast, furiously. Um, and if you lose track of it, you can lose your uptime on quickness and um, alacrity, which are the reasons you bring the profession in the first place. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's hard, essentially. Um... And uh, so those, that's it for the, uh, for the pros and the cons. So what skills are we using for the Mesmer? We're using, let's start with the utility skills. We're using Well of Action, we're using Well of Recall, and we're using Signet of Inspiration. So Well of Action, create a well of delayed time, damaging and slowing enemies. Not really fussed about the damage. The important thing is it gives quickness, seven and a quarter seconds of quickness, and two, two seconds of alacrity, but... The actual well itself gives um, seven and a quarter seconds of quickness, and quickness is what this profession is all about. And 
Well of Recall creates a well that steals memories from foes, damaging and chilling them. So again, the damaging part, not the important thing. This is the alacrity. Alacrity is seven seconds. So from the previous well, we got quickness. From this one, we get alacrity. And Mesmer is the way that your party gets quickness and alacrity. Um, and then Signet of Inspiration. You might see every now and again these boons popping up on my bar. This is what Signet Inspiration does. It gives you a random boon every 10 seconds, and more importantly, when you activate it, it applies those boons to the party members. Um, so if you are if you have boons on you that have been shared by other people, you then reshare them. So let's say you have a, a warrior might stacking next to you. You can then reshare that back to your group um, in a limited way. Um, but this is very important um, as part of the kit. And then for the heal skill, this is certainly a little bit in flux. I'll talk about this when I get into traits um, a little bit. Currently, I have the mantra um, on because I'm running a, a sort of healing spec on Mesmer at the moment. Uh, you'll see Well of Eternity a lot. So this is a, a well that simply... It's, it's primarily for heal, but the point of it is to get that two seconds of alacrity, which is a which is a alacrity that is coming off of a trait. Um, you see all these have the two seconds of alacrity, or rather that has five and then it has two added. Um, all wells get this two seconds of alacrity added to it. So you'll, you might see that quite a lot as well. And then Signet of Ether, gain health every few seconds. This is a very nice tanky, tanky Mesmer skill. Um, heal yourself and refresh all Phantasm's recharges. So this could be very useful um, because it's a Signet. Again, something I'll get into a little bit later. But also to recharge your Phantasms, which, uh, yeah, can be very useful in certain situations. So that's the heal skill, kind of in flux. And then the elite skill, less in flux, but still there's options here. So... We'll talk about how you get quickness and alacrity up, like on a permanent state. If you're, if you have a build that allows you to do it fairly easily, what you can do is you can take Signet of Humility, and this transforms um, your foe into a mower, and this does a lot of damage to break bars. Um, so, this is essentially just for break bars. What you can do as training wheels, and what I often do is I take Time Warp. Um, this is a quickness field, so as I said, part of uh, Mesmer is generating quickness, so this is, you don't st strictly need this to generate enough quickness for your group, however, this is uh, a way to sort of fill in the gaps if you're feeling less confident about generating 100% uptime on quickness for your group, so uh, yeah, the first little thing you can do to make life easy for yourself, pick time warp. So moving on to the equipment. And this is where things get a little bit complicated. So I'm going to try and boil all this down into one number that's really important on this screen. And that's this number here, the boon duration. Now, if you remember, I mentioned that alacrity and quickness generation were the two things that were really important on Mesmer. Quickness is a boon. See there? Seven and a quarter seconds. And boons are affected by boon duration. So actually that seven and a quarter seconds would only be four seconds if I had... Didn't have so much added boon duration here. So I've got 81.3 added boon duration that turns that four seconds of quickness into seven and a quarter seconds of quickness. And that's really very helpful. So what uh, stat set have I got and what can you pick? So I've gone for Minstrels and this is a more healing version of it. But the important thing is that it has concentration on it. So I have toughness, vitality, healing power and concentration. And... This is basically the same down all of my equipment. Just minstrels all the way. The important thing to notice here are these freshwater pearl orichalcum earrings. And these are not ascended. And you might think, well, uh, why have you not got ascended here? Well, actually, the exotic version of this allows you to put a platinum doubloon in. And that plus 4% boon duration you can see from the platinum doubloon is way more than you get from the concentration on an ascended item. So, I mean, you might be able to see just by looking at the difference between those those two things right there. The boon duration is way higher when you can put a platinum doubloon in. So I think that's just a bit of bad balancing, to be honest, from ArenaNet. But for the time being, 
some exotic things with boon duration, get this number up. And the higher this number is, the easier this is going to be to play. Now, you can have this number quite low, actually. You can have this at like 37 odd percent. And you can run a sigil on your weapon. Um, I think it's the sigil of concentration. So, boons you apply last 33% longer for 7 seconds when you swap to this weapon in combat. So, if you had 37% boon duration, and you had this, boons you apply last 33% longer. 37 plus 33 equals 70%. That's 70% 70 boon duration. And then from consumables and, and food, you can get another 30% to boost it up to 100%. I prefer not to use this sigil because it's very difficult to use this um, to keep up quickness. Makes the rotations a lot harder, basically, having to use this sigil. So I've actually gone for some healing sigils because I have a slightly more heal-oriented um, build. You can go for a slightly more damaging oriented, oriented build, and that would be... Um, commander's stats, and that's power, precision, toughness, and concentration. So you still have the concentration, which is affecting boon duration. However, you have power and precision as well, and that will give you a little bit of damage at the same time as generating this quickness and th through this boon duration. So, um, that's essentially the gear. You can mess around with this, get this number up as high as you like it to make playing Mesmer as easy as you like it, essentially. Um, something worth noting, uh, the rune set you choose will massively influence that as well. So I've gone for the Superior Rune of Leadership. And this gives you a total of 30% extra boon duration just from the rune. Now, this rune is actually quite difficult to get. You have to farm uh, Dragon Stand a bit. Um, look it up on the wiki if you're wondering exactly how to do it. There are some other options, which I might put on the screen now. Uh, for some equally boon duration affecting um, runes that you can use. And uh, so that's essentially the gear. Uh, I'm not going to go too much more into that because I don't want to overcomplicate things at this point. So moving on. So there are lots of different variations of traits you can run out there. As I said before, I'm running a slightly Healy Mesmer. So that's what I've kind of specced into. There is something that never changes, and that's this Chronomancer line here. So what do we have? We have Wells grant alacrity to allies when they end. So you know when I hovered over this and I said there's two seconds of quickness? That's what's giving that. So all these Wells, these two Wells, and then if you were to use this Well as well, <laughs> Well as well, haha, <laughs> great puns. Then you'd end up with more, more alacrity for your group when you're using this Well. Um, I don't bother with this because there's ways to keep up alacrity that are a lot simpler. Um, so gain alacrity for each illusion you shatter. So you can you can gain alacrity by shattering, but generally speaking, you'll want to be shattering for something more specific than this. And I'll go into that when I do the little, little rotation tutorial later on. Alacrity applied to you lasts longer. So that's just improving alacrity. Um, which is important. And then we have your phantoms. Phantasms are resummoned after the first time they are shattered. So um, phantasms, if you're not familiar with Mesmer, certain skills create these illusions that are kind of sort of pink and see-through. And they do reasonable amounts of damage and they do certain things. Like this one uh, creates a phantasm which causes alacrity, which is very useful. It also blocks, but that's, you know, not relevant to this. So when you shatter a phantasm, you will gain that phantasm back one time. So the first time it's shattered. So these are your shatter skills. Anytime you press any one of those, you'll get a, you'll get one phantasm back per phantasm you cast, if that makes sense. So moving on, inspiration. You'll see this in a lot of... Um, a lot of Mesmer builds. We've got heal allies around you when you finish preparing a mantra. As I said previously, I run the healing spec of Mesmer. So uh, having that 
is completely dependent on you running a healing type build. If you don't want to do that, you run Medic's Feedback. Create a Feedback Bubble while reviving an ally. So Feedback Bubble, um, if you're not familiar, is this thing, create a dome around you that reflects projectiles. So when you're rezzing, you get you reflect projectiles. And it's this big sort of purple, um, sort of shiny dome. And then I have a restorative illusions. Heal yourself and lose conditions when you use a shatter skill. So as I said, I'm running a slightly more healy spec at the moment. Anything that heals when you shatter, that's pretty good. Um, this is worth mentioning. I'm just going to talk about um, a minor trait for a second. Grants distortion to nearby allies whenever you give yourself distortion. So, your number four shatter here. Gain distortion and destroy all your clones. Um, will... Proc distortion on yourself, and then this grant distortion to nearby allies whenever you give yourself distortion will basically make your entire party invulnerable for a second when you use F4. And there's ways you can make that stronger in other builds, and I'll I'll get to that. Actually, no, I'll talk about it now. So, um, in Domination... There's also a trait here, Blurred Inscriptions. Activating a Signet grants you Distortion. So with this trait, and this trait, whenever you cast a Signet, I gain Distortion for a second. And because of this trait, I'm giving it to my entire team. Meaning, Signets are very strong with the Domination line. And you tend to run Signet of Ether when you're doing it. So, yep, Signet and Distortion. Distortion gets shared to your party. Very strong combination. Um, for now, though, I'll just go back to what I was uh, showing before. Um, so, if you aren't healing, you might want to use Warden's Feedback. Focus skills and weapons reflect projectiles. Um, so, I'm not sure if I mentioned it early on, but you'll be wanting to use Sword Shield and Sword Focus as your weapons. There are builds that use Sword Focus, Sword Shield, Sword Sword, Sword Shield... The focus has the most utility in terms of what you can do for your party in certain situations. So, focus skills, this will reflect, you see it's, there's a little blue text on the description, reflects missiles. Um, Phantasmal Warden reflects missiles, and that's because of this trait. If I turn this off, you can see it disappears. Um, moving on, uh, the Illusionary Inspiration. Phantasms grant regeneration to nearby allies whenever you summon a Phantasm cast Signet of Inspiration. So, Signet of Inspiration is a Signet, so it'll pop that um, thing if you're using the Domination line. Um, I've randomly selected Dueling for some reason. So if I have this uh, running, uh, if I cast a Phantasm, I can't do it without a target, but if I were to cast a Phantasm, it would uh, cast Signet of Inspiration, which is a Signet, so activating Signet grants you Distortion. So... Every time, or rather, according to the cooldown, every time, the internal cooldown, every time you use that, you'll get distortion from it. So that's very useful. Um, but mainly it's for the sharing of the boons. So you're, you're sharing boons a lot while you're playing this build. Um, so I'm just going to go back to Chaos and describe what I have. Um, this is a very tanky setup using Chaos. We have Illusionary Defense. Take reduced damage for each illusion you have in the world. So... You're a magician, and they can't hurt you. Win-win. Uh, this one is... There's not really much you can take in this slot. You tend to take chaotic transference. Gain condition damage based on your toughness. Not terribly useful. You know, chaos armor grants protection. You're not really giving yourself chaos armor in this build, so... Um, you could use Mirror of Anguish to... Um, have a free break stun. That can be useful sometimes. Um... And I'm also going to talk about a minor trait here. So outgoing boon and condition duration is increased for every boon on you. So I mentioned how my boon duration is at 81%. This will hugely boost my boon duration. Um, in any given scenario, you're going to have anywhere from 5 to 8 boons on you in a decent party. So this will give a considerable boost to your boon duration while that's happening. And if I'm already at 81, I'm, I'm going to get over the cap of 100 easily here um, with this trait. Which means I don't need to use boon duration food, um, 
which, uh, yeah, as I said, I'll talk about a little bit later on. Um, and then we want we want bountiful dis disillusionment. Sorry, I had a, got a bit bountifully disillusioned there for a second. Uh, when you use a shatter, you will gain stability. You and nearby allies gain boons based on what shatter is used. So, gaining boons, you're always sharing boons, giving stability out. Uh, as I said there, like you know, when you use your shatters, you gain more boons of potential. It's all about it's all about the boons. It's all about the boons. So let's switch that to domination and move on. So we've got empowered illusions. Illusions deal more damage. So we're talking about a slightly more damagey setup using domination. Um, the main reason you take domination is blurred inscriptions. As I said, as I was talking about earlier, activating a signet grants you distortion. So using that. Distortion. Using this. Distortion. This trait. Phantasms. When I generate my first phantasm, I'm going to get distortion. Um, and then here, we've got mental anguish. Shatter skills. Deal more damage. This skill, this damage is doubled against foes that are not activating skills. Um, again, just sort of a more damage focus. But this is team focused. So this blurred inscriptions is the main reason you would take domination to spam distortion on your party, make them invulnerable at key moments. Um, so that was a pretty long winded explanation of the specializations, but it can get a bit complicated. So I figured I ought to go into a detail with it all. So let's move on. Before I get into the actual rotations, I just want to mention essentially why I don't like the Sigil of Concentration, which I mentioned earlier. It's the That was the Sigil that gives you 33% boon duration when you switch weapons. Switching weapons constantly means losing access to this shield. You're going to need that pull on the focus, so you cannot switch out the focus, which means you're going to be swapping out the shield from time to time. Um, and what I'm demonstrating here is permanent alacrity, more than permanent alacrity, like ample alacrity, with three Avengers. Ed, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do I mean? I just... You know what I mean! What do you mean? So these are things that will stay up the whole fight if you're fighting against a boss. Um, incidentally, they are created with the Echo of Memory. Um... And they, by themselves, give off enough alacrity. So you shouldn't ever really have a problem if you're not running the Sigil of Concentration, keeping up large amounts of alacrity on your party. Um, so the Well of Recall can be almost surplus to requirements. Um, but, yeah, so I just wanted to mention that first. But let's get into the core um, issue of every... What well, issue? The core factor, shall we say, of every Mesmer every Chronomancer build, and that's the F5 skill, Continuum Split. So the core of every thing is getting three clones or phantasms up, using Continuum Split, use all your powerful abilities, and then get them all back again through Continuum Split. Destroy your illusions and create a rift in space-time. When it expires, you will revert back to this point with your previous health, endurance, and skill recharges. So you use all your cooldowns, and then you get reverted. And this is how skills over 90 second recharge will, um, like Time Warp for example, get their cooldown lowered to 90%, 90 seconds rather. So it halves essentially the cooldown of Time Warp, because you use it every time you use Continuum Split, never out of Continuum Split incidentally. Um, and everything you can use multiple times uh, you use, you can use twice. So you use Continuum Split, Well of Action, Well of Recall, Signet of Inspiration, it gets reset, and then you do it again. Um, and also Tides of Time. So these are the, the quickness skills, right? Quickness from Tides of Time, Quickness from Well of Action, Well of Recall, because you can, and then some quickness from Signet of Inspiration as well. And it ends up looking a bit like this. So I didn't use Time Warp there, but you can see like all my cooldowns are reset. At this point, I can then do it again. 
and these cooldowns are now on their original cooldown. I've I've got um if I just set my weapons for a second, I still have alacrity, so these cooldowns are all sped up. Um you know, through the, the alacrity these Avengers are giving me. And I'll be able to use the Well of Action again pretty soon. Um, and that's that's essentially it. You're going to be wanting to use all your skills. This is when you're generating the most quickness. And then you share it with, with Signet of Inspiration. And you'll see the cooldown of these skills is going to roughly coincide now with my Continuum Split. Um, and when that's up and this, these skills are up as well, I can do the next rotation for quickness generation. Um, and as I said, the time warp is how you can sort of get a little bit of, a little bit of backup in your combination. So I'm using continuous split, five, time warping. And then I'm going to switch back. Uh, at this point, I can do another, another set. Start generating new phantasms because I've I've um, I've shattered twice, and our alacrity is still through the roof. Our quickness is on twenty seconds and falling. Obviously, this is going to come back up. These skills are going to come back up before we run out of quickness, um, and that's essentially it. I mean, it's it can be quite daunting to do in a combat scenario. Um, however, actually now that I've just gone through it, it's a pretty simple process. You use your skills in Continuum pro uh, Split, you get them back, you use them again, um, and you keep up permanent alacrity by having as many as many illusionary defend uh, Avengers as you can. You can see it's actually still running from when they were alive before. Um, as many illusionary uh, Avengers as you can up to generate alacrity, and if you need to use the Well of Recall, to sort of fill in that gap, that alacrity gap, you can do that. Um, but yeah, that's the basic of the of the rotation. You can go out there and you can look for like the fine details uh, on QT website and stuff like that. Um, so for consumables, what do we have? Well, it really depends on what kind of number you have here and what kind of number you want here in order to achieve the build that you've decided to, to go for. Um, there are certain foods that increase boon duration. Um, fried gold dumpling does 20% boon duration, so if I took that now, I would shoot up over 100%. Um, and this outgoing boon duration would would be huge in comparison to, to what I actually need. So... Um, I don't need to use this particular food. In fact, because I'm running a slightly heal, heal focus setup, I'm using delicious rice balls um, for heal effectiveness. Another, well, this is a consumable that you can use rather than a food. Um, it's Bountiful Sharpening Stones. I'll put a recipe up for that now. Um, this increases boon duration by 10. So with both of these, you can get 20 from that, 10 from that, and you can actually get a full 30% from consumables. Um, to add to this to this total, um, and actually before what I was running, it was both of those foods, and I had the I had this set, which was uh, you know like an assassin's a more damage focused mesmer that was also focused on generating boon duration. You can see I had the rune of the surging, which gives fifteen percent from the two and four bonus, um, which you get from the two and four on leadership as well, but you also get another fifteen from uh, the number six bonus, which is why I ended up going for leadership. Um, to make life easy on myself, essentially. Um, but before, as I said, I had the surging, and I was using these foods to cover up the uh, the difference there. So um, that's that's essentially the consumables. I mean, you can run basically whatever you like, as long as you have your boon duration to the level that you're happy with. And there are some tanky mesmers that use tanky food. Uh, you know, because they have boon duration similar to mine that's always going to cap out at that 100%. Um, so hopefully what I've been talking about hasn't shook right over your heads. This guide is still a basic guide, but it has a lot more complexity to it than the average one. I think the only one that compares in terms of complexity is the engineer. Um, but both the engineer 
and the Mesmer are rewarding um, as a consequence for being difficult. So hopefully you have as much fun with this class as I have, and uh, all that's left to say is, thanks for watching. The Hypnotoad demands you to tell a friend. <laughs>